Tim Waltz recently gave a speech where he not only addressed some of the attacks that have been thrown his way from Republicans, but he also showed how he was truly made for this moment. So let's just look over a couple of these and then jump in with the context. Hey you, yes, you. Did you know we have memberships for as low as $3 a month? You can help the channel grow, reach new heights and help protect democracy. And you get a long list of exclusive perks from members only polls to getting my videos early. The link is always in the description of every video. If you want, go ahead and check that out and thank you guys. Then in 2005, I felt the call of duty again, this time of being service to my country in the halls of Congress. My students inspired me to run for that office and I was proud to make it to Washington. I was a member of the Veterans Affairs Committee and a champion of our men and women in uniform. I'm gonna say it again as clearly as I can. I am damn proud of my service to this country. And I firmly believe you should never denigrate another person's service record. To anyone brave enough to put on that uniform for our great country, including my opponent, I just have a few simple words. Thank you for your service and sacrifice. And this response only further shows the class, the level of respect that exists on one side versus the other who will stoop to any low they can just to try and land an attack on the other. I mean, at this point, Republicans have disparaged veterans. They've attacked Kamala for her race, for her sex. They've attacked diversity hires. Remember, the timeline for Walt as a veteran actually goes, he files to run for Congress in February 2005, retires in May 2005, and his unit gets noticed they'll deploy in July and the order to do so in August. So he re retired prior to knowing they were going to deploy, prior to them deploying by two or three months, not because of that fact. That is a lie Republicans are telling. He reached Command Sergeant Major but didn't complete the coursework to keep the rank before he retired. So the idea it's stolen valor because he claims a rank that he achieved is just a semantic attack. He didn't retire a Command and Sergeant Major, sure, he was one rank below when he retired, but he did reach that rank. So calling it stolen valor is hilariously stupid. I mean, it's disgusting, honestly. He deployed in Operation Enduring Freedom to Europe and Italy, Turkey as well, which was an operation with the Afghanistan war. So all of these attacks against Waltz are just absolutely baseless. They're trying to pick apart little semantic things to make things seem like more than they are. And it, it also distracts from the points that he is trying to bring, like saying that weapons of war shouldn't be on the streets. Republicans don't want to talk about how they want those weapons to be on the streets, so they're just saying, whoa, 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 he was never in the Iraq war. He he retired before he deployed to the Iraq war. Like, how dare he rather fight for veterans and their rights than fight a pointless Republican war founded on lies? That's all you need to know. You don't have to ask twice. We know who they are. A guy who goes to Mar-a-Lago and this is a direct quote. He sits there and tells his friends, you're rich as hell and we're going to cut your taxes. I believe him when he says that. But he also turns around and tells workers their wages are too high. I keep bringing this up. Who do you know who's asking to cut taxes on billionaires while stiffing working people? I don't know anybody. And I'll tell you what, I think there's a lot of people think that they're on his side or voting for him that when you put it to them like that, they start thinking things differently. The funniest part about the outlook of this race is that most people who are voting for Trump are doing so against their own self-interest and Trump isn't even trying to hide that. He pledges to further lower corporate taxes and taxes for the rich, something that hurts the middle and lower class much more than the minuscule amount that it helps. Corporations only spend that money on stock buybacks. It actually lowers business investments, which further enriches themselves. None of it ends up trickling down and in, in turn, the government has to cut spending to afford this loss of revenue, education, roads, social security, Medicare, food stamps, WIC. They're going to take from the poor and give it to the rich. And Trump is open about doing that. He laughed with Elon about firing union workers and said he'd need his help. He complains about people's wages being too high. He said he wants to cut the Department of Education also he can afford more tax cuts for his billionaire buddies. My wife often reminds me, Hope is a great word and a beautiful name, but it's not a damn plan. 
We can't hope that we defeat Donald Trump. We can't hope that we can collectively bargain. We can't hope we protect Social Security. We can't hope that we address climate change. You don't hope to win. You plan, prepare, and work to win. Look at this place. This place is filled with people who like hard work. These are people who get up and enjoy hard work and know how to get it done. So what do you think? A room full of 1.4 million AFSCME members and this room here. How many voters do you think we could turn out in an hour? How many friends can we bring to the polls? You could tell that Waltz was a great coach because he is really amazing at these motivating speeches and lines. It just comes off the tongue as natural for him. He's exactly correct here as well. Hope can be a driving force of why you work, but you have to do the work. Hoping alone is never going to be enough. Harris and Waltz have been doing the work though. They're traveling swing state to swing state while Trump has been MIA. He went to very Republican Montana. I mean, these campaigns are just in different gears. And as we we as voters have to mobilize, we have to alert our friends, let them know the threat that's before us, that they should get out and vote, do everything we can to ensure a victory. That way, Donald Trump and his 70 election denying officials can't enact their game plan. And the man who tried to steal the 2020 election can never set foot in office again. <laughs>